Uh, I guess it's good day, uh, colleagues. Uh, my name is Pumla Williams. I'm the Director General in GCIS. We are going to be holding this media briefing. But let me start off by just apologizing because I think we invited you for 11 o'clock appointment and we couldn't just get our story writers. We will appreciate that the events leading to this media briefing are the events that happened last night. So I think we had a lot of running around to put together the statement. So on behalf of the ministers and the deputy ministers, I wish to extend our uh, apology for this. But coming to the panel, which I'm happy that all three of them managed to come in here, the minister in the presidency, Monty Gungubele, and minister of defense, minister Tandi Modise, the Deputy Minister of the Defense and Military Veterans, Deputy Minister Makwetla, and the General Mpehwa. Uh, they will be addressing the members of the media. And without wasting any time, may I invite Minister Monty Kungubele to address you. Thank you, DG. Good, good day, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm right, I'll say good morning. Uh, we have called this press briefing today to provide an update on the issues which unfolded overnight. This group of military veterans were engaging with last night have been engaged by government over the past 11 months in spite of the existence of recognized military veterans association in the interest of reaching out to the broader section of veterans since 1994 the democratic government has placed the legitimate concerns of military veterans at the heart of its policy interventions this recognizes and acknowledges the immense contribution these men and women to the liberate made to the liberation of South Africa. The issues and concerns of military veterans received even, sh received even sharper focus when by presidential proclamation in 2009, the Department of Military Veterans was brought into existence. The legislation giving life to this department was finalized with the Military Veterans Act 18 of 2011 proclamation in December 2011. According to the legislation, the DMV is supposed to facilitate and coordinate 11 benefits that accrue to military veterans. To facilitate these objectives, military veterans associations were, were officially recognized and an umbrella body was established called South African National Military Veterans Association. Ordinarily, government engages from time to time with recognized structures of military veterans associations, including also through the umbrella body, the SAMVA. The DMV has consistently been appealing to the LSWV, which is this other grouping we met last night, grouping to register themselves with DMV in order to facilitate better engagement with them. The progress in this work was staggered and in November 2020, a group of veterans under the banner of Liberation Struggle War Veterans, which is commonly now referred to as LSWV organization, marched to Union Building in protest about services they are receiving from government. President Cyril Ramaphosa established a presidential task team to address the issues raised by veterans over time. 
the president assigned the deputy president of the republic mr david mabuza to lead this task team under the normal uh, acronym called ptt presidential task team as already as read as early as november and december 2020 the deputy president held extensive discussions with the military veterans and their association to assess and hear their grievances the result was the development of a consensus document which laid out a series of mutually agreed areas needing attention. The work of PTT, Presidential Task Team, fully read, has processed well and has, has, pro has progressed well, has proceeded well, my apology, and has delivered on its commitment to continuous engagement with military veterans in a bid to resolve issues raised. As part of this process, the PTT has already held three provincial consultations in Gauteng, Eastern Cape and Limpopo, with a visit to other provinces in the advanced planning stages. These sessions were led by a deputy president and afforded veterans an, an opportunity to air their concerns, but also to receive feedback on the manner in which their grievances have been taken up by the PTT. We are able to confirm, ladies and gentlemen, that our understanding is that all the parties were appreciative on the work that has been done to date. A lot has been put in place with clear timelines on what is being done and still to be done. We can confirm some of the work done to date, which includes, amongst others, the following. A draft bill to amend the Military Veterans Act to deal with some of the discrepancies in the bill, such as the definition of the military veteran, provisions of health care benefits to the dependents of the military veterans, and means test criteria. Second bullet, the review of the Special Pensions Act, the development of the pensions policy, work around the presidential patents and expungement of criminal records on some of the members. Social relief of distress and the housing for their members. Involvement of some of the members in the social economic activities. Repatriation of the remains of the military and the erection of the monuments in the host countries and memorization memorialization of fallen heroes, support on education of the children of the, combat, of the veterans, pension of the land for farming and human settlements. At all stages of this process, feedback has been provided to the veterans. In April 2021, a specific session was held with Liberation War Veterans Organization to provide an update chaired by the Deputy President. In as far as legislative review is concerned, a draft bill proposing necessary amendments to the Military Veterans Act of 2011 has already served before the PTT in its first draft and referred back for further inputs to the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans. It is the amendment of this legislation which will enable improvements in how many services of are offered to the veterans. Once relevant consultations are concluded, this will need to go through the relevant process and cabinet prior to becoming law. On the social economic support, we wish to acknowledge that a lot of work still, still needs to be done in this area. The interventions by the president to involve premiers in coordinating government programs will go a long way in our view in, a, in coordinating efforts to support this aspect. On the contentious issue of decent housing raised by military veterans, delivery of housing and rescue of distressed mortgages is ongoing under the current legislative and regulatory provisions. The DMV has noted the matter of dealing with mortgage bonds above the department threshold. The issue is addressed in the draft amendment bill. 
the DMV will comply with the policy of human settlement through the Memorandum of Agreement review process, which is currently advanced. A panel of verification has been established, chaired by Major General Mashwala. To date, a total number of processed applications as at September 2021 stand at 2,152. The process of verification has not been without challenges as a significant number of applicants have not presented themselves for verification. The contact information they have left with the verification team has not enabled the Secretariat to conduct them. We take the opportunity of reminding all those who have submitted applications for verification to conduct the verification work stream via the DMV for the dates of their verification sessions. Under heritage and memori memorialization, ongoing engagements are, are being held with the Department of Arts and Culture and these agencies such as SARA, National Heritage Council and Freedom Park. A memorandum of understanding will be put in place between the two departments. We also report that the Matola Raid Memorial Site in Mozambique, Somafco in Tanzania, and Kwakeka in Uganda have already been established. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, over and above, the Deputy President has undertaken provincial visits to meet with the Provincial Military Veterans Association and provincial governments to assess some of the projects the last of which was in Limpopo province in June 2021. The engagement between government and the military associations have thus far been productive and cordial, even though discussions have been difficult. Therefore, in our view, there was no reason for this group to act in an unlawful manner as it transpired last night. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you very much, Minister. At this point, I will entertain questions. Nungweba uh, is on the board, and Nicholas, you are already number one. exactly how this happened. The Minister of Defence, the Minister in the Presidency, technically two individuals that should be the most guarded by government were taken hostage. I'd also like to understand, you are here to talk about state matters, but we are in an election period. This is a government run by the ANC. The ANC is crisscrossed the country, saying that you are with the people, you understand what the people need, yet we have people that laid down their lives to bring freedom to South Africa and they feel that the only way that they can actually get you to listen is by taking you hostage. How does that make you feel as ANC members? And what are you going to do about an, in an election period? Are you not embarrassed at all that at the very moment when you should be getting people to trust you and vote for you, they're taking you hostage? These are still citizens of the country regardless of them being military veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Okay, my mobile phone from ENC. Surely it is an embarrassing uh, situation that you have a minister and a deputy minister, uh, two ministers, being in that sort of a situation. Are you not concerned about the sort of message that this is sending to the rest of South Africa in terms of the country's safety and security? If you could have ministers in the security cluster being held hostage. And number two, what does this say about our intelligence? Is our intelligence compromised? Thank you. 
can take one more. Is that it? Uh, Minister, should should we take also the online questions first? Okay. Thank you. Is that how you win? Oh, it's not. Sorry. You look so much like how you win. It's Mawande. Oh, Mawande. Sorry, Mawande. My question is simple. Uh, Minister Kungubede, you didn't take us through as to what happened exactly in terms of this hostage situation. I, I, I saw the video of you saying they closed the doors. Was there any ukbamba nama washing or anything like that? How did it transpire exactly from the point of uh, a stalemate and what led to the stalemate and what transpired step by step from then into the hostage situation? Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks, Mawand. Can we, ministers, I don't know how you deploy yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, surely, maybe I'll deal with two questions, but Minister Mudisa will come and uh, assist and make it even look better. And we have a great show to do that. <laughs> uh, were we not embarrassed? Is it not embarrassing? Maybe one can say it's not acceptable. Uh, in my view, we, we are dealing with a, a maturing democracy. Uh, which enjoins us, especially as government, to listen to our people. When we listen to them, we don't start on the basis of paranoia or suspicion. We listen to them because we trust that their grievances are legitimate and indeed they are well meant. We don't always go to those meetings with those suspicions. For instance, we're not meeting these people for the first time. They have not done this before. So we have no basis to suspect that they were going to do what they did last night. And uh, if we were embarrassed because we trusted our people, maybe that's the consequence we have to live with. Of course, going forward, we have to be more alert. That's the first point there. The second point is that Mawanda is interested on how the movie was last night. <laughs> we, we had a meeting, because we should explain this. We had a meeting uh, at the instance of the military veterans who we met last night. And we anticipated, because of some of the issues we had them raising, that they would have been interested in the presidential task team progress work, work progress. As a result, we had those preparations. So getting there, our intentions was to start a meeting and first listen to them what exactly they wanted the meeting to do because we were very careful about assuming uh, we could not move beyond that point. We proposed the agenda, we could not move beyond that point because they demanded that uh, the president, the table president should be there. And our attitude, my wonder, is that the president is ahead of the state together with the deputy president. They have done 
taken efforts to establish a government through which in a broader sense on day to day they interact with society. We think it is not fair to expect the president to be everywhere wherever he is wanted because he has put together a machinery through which he interacts with people and we think that we were that machinery last night. But uh, military veterans were not prepared to accept that. We then agreed that it's them then who said they could not proceed with us. We accepted that. Uh, you want me to repeat what I said on the video? No. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as we were proceeding to the door, we realized that the doors were being locked. And uh, we realized that, yeah, it's no longer as exciting as it started. So I will be unfair to say, hey, Peters, they know. We were there against our will, but it was not a violent, what to call, uh, uh, sort of stay. Maybe that's how far I would want to take. Maybe the uh, Minister of Defense will actually. Good afternoon. There's actually nothing to add that Minister Gungubele dealt with all the questions. But there is the question where you asked us whether um, two ministers and a deputy minister being held hostage says anything to the country about the state of security. I think it demonstrates that uh, South Africa is not a security heavy state that ministers still trust fellow citizens to sit around with them. It also demonstrates that we will go to any instance to hear concerns about any citizen, whether they are liberation veterans or ordinary citizens, to listen to the concerns that they put us. This meeting was not planned as such. We went there because the presidential task team invited us to go because the matter was there. It is also true that we were aware that uh, this particular grouping had started at the Tule House. And when I was told as Minister of Defense and Veterans Affairs, my indication was that in fact I would like to have a meeting with the group at the department because all their matters belong there. And therefore, um, it can't be that we were avoiding. It is also a fact that uh, military veterans department specifically was established to, to ensure that no South African military vet is actually treated like or finds themselves in, in subhuman and, you know, we, we deliberate action must be taken to ensure that we respect the contribution people made to take this country to where it is. And therefore I was prepared to have a meeting and I am still waiting to have a meeting with the military vets, the recognized one and this particular one which I'm still waiting to see if they will reapply as they have been asked three times already to reapply so that they can get recognition from the minister. So. I am sure that uh, people will think about a uh, state is weak because, no, I don't think we should go there. We should say that we are very proud as South Africa to engage, to sit amongst our communities and amongst our military vets without thinking they would kill us. We should also take it further, Minister Gungubele, to say, in fact, at some point they were singing liberation songs and some of us joined in because they were our songs too. Therefore, um, we did not feel that our lives were in danger. We were unhappy about being refused to leave when the meeting clearly had aborted. We do not think that any citizen, whether they had volunteered to fight for the liberation of this country, has any right to interfere with any individual, whether that individual is a minister or an ordinary citizen's right to sit 
or to walk or to do whatever. That is the crux of what we are taking issue with here. Every citizen, every South African has the right to sit, to walk where they want. And therefore, no legitimate demand of any citizen gives that citizen the right to deprive the other citizens. That is what yesterday was all about. Not that we don't recognize that there are challenges, not that we are not willing to relook at what has happened. I am upfront in saying that with the amount of resources poured into the Department of Military Veterans, our military veterans should be better off than they are now. And therefore, I intend to do an investigation to find out where the resources have gone, why the lives of the veterans have not improved, why they are not in the houses that the state has gone all out to build, why they do not have access to all the clinics and hospitals in this country as they should have, and why, if we have said they have education benefit, they and their children, school fees were not paid. Those are the issues which we think we are taking away and that which we think we will be investigating. And therefore, no, we were not ashamed, we were not threatened, we were just um, uncomfortable with being held against our will. Thank you. Thank you, ministers. Uh, do we have follow-ups or very few more? Yes, no, just a, a quick one, uh, Minister and the Senior. So, how did you manage to keep the cool of your protectors during the situation? Were they inside the room? Were they outside? Did they try to intervene? Did you stop them? Or what happened exactly with the protectors? Your, your Okay, and then, Mangobe, I'm seeing it. Okay, uh, my question first is just checking, first of all, if um, there will be any other engagement that you will be holding, because we do understand that there's a group of um, vets that are still converting outside uh, the venue. Are there any planned meetings that you're still going to hold with them? And secondly, the Deputy President uh, was mentioned on a campaign trail in Northern Cape today but uh, he did not go there. Why is that the case? Is it something to do with what happened yesterday? When you're saying they are meeting outside, you mean here or St. George's? Oh, okay. I think that's all. Oh, no, online. Um, thank you, DG. Um, we have a question from Sophie Mukwena, um, the SBC's international news editor. South Africa is currently the chair of the SADC organ on politics, defense, and security. There are challenges in Mozambique and Eswatini. Uh, President Ramaphosa, as the chairperson of SADC Troika, must lead in finding solutions to the political and security instability in the region. And how will he convince other heads of state and government in the region that South Africa is ready um, to ensure peace and security in the region when we have our own challenges, for example, what happened in July, um, and now the Minister of Defense and Minister in the highest office in the land having been held hostage. We also have a question from Rory Sang, uh, Hosanna from The Citizen. The question is, uh, now that you say you have finalized the definition of a military veteran, can you please share what that precise definition of a military veteran is? Mm -hmm. These issues which you say have been resolved with military vets have been going on for years. What took you so long to find these solutions and why have they been ignored for so long? Uh, we also have a few more questions on the other platform. Um, um, Zwandil Mbeche from the SABC is asking, were your lives under threat? Um, there's also a question um, from Tumelo uh, from the SABC's SABC Africa <laughs> channel. <laughs> Were your lives under threat? Our lives. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, there's also a question from Tumelo uh, from the SABC's um, channel Africa 
all ministers and deputy ministers are courted close protectors who drive them around. Um, where were your protectors to, uh, during the hostage? Um, then there's a follow-up question from um, Zwandile again from the SAPC. Um, you have faced a double security failure, the riots, then ministers being held hostage. Is this a demonstration of an ineptitude state security um, apparatus? Should I continue or should I pause there, DG? Do you want to take a pause or should we take... How many are there? There's two more. Two. Should, should we take two? Uh, okay, let's take the last two minutes. All right, thank you, DG. Nogukanya uh, Mdambo from Chakranda FM is asking it's a couple of questions actually. One, why did government officials not heed to concerns about safety following the events that transpired at Lutuli House earlier on in the week? I think that question was asked and responded to. Mm -hmm. Two, how do you respond to claims that there is no separation of state and party? Is this an ANC matter or is it a government matter? Uh, she's also asking uh, who should the blame be apportioned to the security detail um, ill advice from government structures who agreed there should be a meeting with the group and what are the consequences uh, she's also asking why was the deputy president unable to attend the meeting because as far as we understand the talks collapse after they realized that the deputy president would not be present and um, Nobi left from Reuters is asking um, how long was the standoff um, once the doors were shut closed and how long were you held against your will? Those are the questions. Thank you very much, DG. Okay. Thank you very much for the questions. I just said I would start at the end. Um, um, is, there, is, uh, is this an ANC issue? Is there no separation between the state and the party? There's definitely a separation between the state and the party. The grouping went to the Chile House. Um, I suspect it was a party discussion because we were not there. The state was quite prepared to have a session. The PTT is a state established by the president to give a hearing to any or all um, military vets who, in this case, they, you, you will also appreciate that they are, you, they are, their military associations have been recognized and therefore formally the state would only be working through the recognized associations but that the president went out of his way to make sure that um, we listen we hear every military vet who has issues which may not be coming out through the formally recognized um, 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 associations so i would contest that uh, this is a an issue where there is no separation of the state. Um, do you tell somebody who has a, uh, a little stone in his shoes how to step? They may have thought that it gives them a little leverage to go back to their political home, if they were all MK, to start there and to put their case. It may also not be a wrong thing to accept that once they took the decision that they would have expected that the political bosses in the Tule House would actually appreciate what they are going to and be able to give the support they might need should the state not be uh, as supportive. As I say, the meeting with us has not taken place. Um, I'm hoping that that meeting will take place. Um, I'm hoping that we will break the rules and meet up as the Ministry of uh, Military Vets 
have a session with them even though they are not recognized and it is important to do this because you you deliberately create a system and a process that recognizes that asks certain information that identifies people so that the state does not interact with everybody who comes in with whichever but i must say that um we will be more careful when we meet and we will make sure that um, um, we are not taken hostage again. You, you're saying, um, does this mean uh, South Africa is a failed state because uh, two ministers and a deputy minister were held against their will uh, because there were riots in July in the country? I don't think so. I think South Africa um, is being put to a test. I think thus far we must be proud that even though yesterday, yes, um, police came in to break up the hostage situation, so far we have been able to hold it very, very tightly for the state not to go overboard in the use of, of, of force, for the state to listen more than it uses force. And I think that is a plus for the democracy of South Africa. Should we be worried that these instances will continue? I'll tell you a joke when I was in Iran in July um, and, and, and uh, ambassadors from Africa were saying to us and the South African ambassador there, welcome to the club because you now also have uprisings. And we said to them, it is good to be tested if you are in a democratic state it is how you respond to the test that defines the quality of democracy and the quality of the state that you want to continue having. So I hope that at no stage will we go overboard and make sure that a, a, a minister goes into a meeting with four or five bodyguards. It is not necessary. And to answer that question, yes, uh, our protectors were there. No, they were not tempted to beat up anybody they knew that we could hold our own because what was taking place within those closed doors was people talking, was people um, differing on, on issues, was people now and then breaking into songs and joining each other. It wasn't a bloodbath. It was people saying, but you are not understanding our point of view, and us saying, but we want to really understand your point of view. Let us meet but you are refusing us to discuss this matter here because you are demanding that we physically bring a deputy president to a meeting. And even if we wanted to, um, even amongst us as comrades, does a minister order a president into a meeting because an unrecognized group of people demand? Does a deputy president drop everything they are doing if and when they have expressed their, their apology to that meeting and have designated somebody to chair in their instance. We respected um, these uh, citizens and former liberation uh, veterans. We, we did everything we could, and we will still go out to do everything we can. What we will not tolerate is deliberate acts of disregarding the rights of others because that is criminal and when the police came in there they were not dealing with anything else but the violation of other people's rights uh, minister whatever i left you will have to deal with thank you I think most of the issues Minister Mdisa has actually meticulously dealt with them. Actually, nearly all. But I thought <laughs> it's important maybe to say something further. You see, the work of the VIP shielding ministers takes different forms. Sometimes takes a conduct in front of the situation sometimes and conducts are different it's either you shoot or you take a particular posture so the posture that was required to be taken 
that last night is the posture they took. I think Minister Mdisa has explained that. Because it's not always about defending minister by beating people. But you analyze the situation and actually after analyzing it, determine how best to deal with that. The best way to deal with that situation was calm VIPs. And they were very calm. And watch it as it was unfolding. And they did well. Until the state came in. And I think minister explained that. Further engage, I think Mr. Mdisa explained that why the deputies and councillor trip, we can't be able to explain mm -hmm. that now. And I think the question was, why didn't the deputies and president come last night? I think Mr. Mdisa has also explained. Listen, I, I want to repeat this and reinforce it. Government is big. These two are heads of the entire government. Mm -hmm. So when Minister Deputy Mabuza says to me, Minister and President, I want you to go and chair a meeting in St. George's because my program, direct, I can say, Table President, where are you going? <laughs> I can't ask the Table President that because I'm there, amongst other things, to carry his what to call his instructions. Let's come to the President leading uh, Sadak. I think to me, Minister Mutis, it borders on saying, are we suggesting that there's a perfect family? So that before you are appointed to be a president or to be a chair of a board, let's check that you've got a perfect family. I'm sure that's not what we're asking. Maybe the key question you must ask, are we, is the president in charge of the country? We think he is. Did we have developments that raise eyebrows? Yes, we had. Because he is leading a community of living people. There are instances in any country, like it, it happened in America in the capital. I mean, America is known to be a day on, the biggest, they always say, the greatest democracy on earth. But look what happened at the capital that time. It's because you're leading human beings. Some of these developments are not a source of, not all developments that are upheaval are a source of embarrassment. They are always opportunities to learn better how to lead your country. In that instance, in our view, there is no basis to question uh, the credentials of the president to lead Sadak because even in Sadak, there's a lot he can account for which he has turned around, which happened positively under his what to call his, uh, his leadership. I think, Sister Andy, dealt. L lastly, I think this question, Sister Andy, keeps on coming. Were you safe? We appeared to be safe. Maybe it's correct to put it that way. We appeared to be safe. But we were very cautious. That's all I can say. Oh, okay. To me, if I remember, Deputy Minister Tavan, it was about the standoff might have been from 7 to 10. Standoff? The standoff started from 7 to 10. To 10 to 10. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think the ministers have dealt with all the questions except to just uh, confirm that the amendment bill, once it has served before cabinet, will be made public. And I think there's a colleague who was asking what is the definition saying. I think they will be able to get a copy and be able to go through it and maybe give their inputs. If maybe they want to give inputs, it will be published uh, for public comment. Um, all right, it's okay, so we can take. All right, thank you. Um, Liz Zeka um, from Merlin Guardian is asking Minister Mungubele, given how easily this, inc this incident occurred, will this mean an increased security detail for the affected ministers? Mm. And to Minister Mudise, there has been tensions between the vets and the ministry for a few years now. Their concerns do seem to fall on deaf ears. Can you share what has this task team headed by the Deputy President done since its inception to help the veterans? Um, then there was a question that was asked much earlier on that we had missed. Um, it is from uh, Sune from Daily Maverick. 
uh, how many military veterans across all groupings have verified themselves through the Department of Military Veterans and what is the estimate of military veterans that have not verified themselves through the DMV um, then um, we have a follow-up question from Sophie Mukwena um, to Minister Modise. You didn't answer my question regarding the chair of SADC organ on politics. Um, I think it was a question related to the president. Um, I president think, she, I she, think she responded. Yes, that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a question that I received by SMS. I'm not sure who it's from, but I think it's relevant. Um, the question is, what is the role of SAMVA as a statutory body representing military veterans in these engagements? Thank you. Role of SAMVA. Yes. Role in the status? What? What is the role mm -hmm. of uh, SAMVA as a statutory body? representing military veterans in these engagements. So what is the role of, of Samba in the engagements that are ongoing? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you once more. Um, increased security now. Security around the ministers to be increased because um, uh, this incident, I don't think so. I think that uh, we are always um, uh, trying to look at where the resources of the state can best be used. We have had many challenges. You have had uh, issues around South Africa's wage, lab wage bill. So why would we want to increase security, more security detail around individual ministers when the country has so many uh, issues? I think what we want to open up, it is uh, better, more frequent, simpler communications mm -hmm. between citizens in the various um, communities that are uh, working with uh, particular uh, um, departments because then you begin to understand the community you are working with and uh, the, then it matters become easier so i don't think that the state must even start dreaming of increasing securities around its ministers if anything we should be aspiring to in years from now to be like the Scandinavian countries where I can walk anywhere without feeling threatened by anything and anybody. So, so for me, it would be a big no, 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 no. Um, you are right. You're saying uh, there has been a tension between the military vets and the department. Yes, where people are in need and people are desperate and where you have a new department that has just been established and where perhaps you have not uh, thoroughly searched out the capacity that you need within that department to understand and to serve the community in need you will have uh, uh, tensions but also even when you have the required capacity if the wherewithal is not there for the department to service the desired uh, uh, community you will have that competition between what i need and what the state can give me and most of the time i think the tensions come from there um am i happy that every cent that has been given to the department of military vets has gone to military vets i'm not sure and that is why i earlier on said i am going to be investigating make sure that every cent goes to where it was supposed to go um are we looking after the military vets as we should because earlier on somebody said these people have been complaining and you've been ignoring 
I don't think it is a matter of ignoring. It might have been that when some issues came up, the Department of Defense, as it was established then, did not have the elasticity and the resources and the personnel to actually go in and deal with these issues. But you must also remember that when in 1993-94 um, we started uh, really defining and planning what the South African Defense Force would be like, we also had to build in a mechanism because the numbers from the statutory forces all over the country and the non-states were such that this country would not have been able to afford a defense force. But you also had to balance out because you wanted a representative defense force. And therefore you came up with a process of lessening the numbers but um, getting people to take voluntary demobilization. And I think that it is in those demobilization packages which were really ridiculously small that the first mistakes were done. And these mistakes were then being corrected by the now established focused Department of Military Vets. So yes, we take him too long to, to deal with the issues, but we do know that uh, most of the military vets don't want uh, um, luxury houses. They want a roof, a decent roof. They want to be able to eat. They want to be able to know that when they are sick, they will be taken care of. That is the dignity that we must make sure that they get. Um, should we, because one of the demands that was placed before the PTT was a package of 4.2 million, can the state afford it? No, the state cannot afford it. Um, and so what do you do in the meantime? In the meantime, you look at what you have, what you can afford, and what you can pace in into the future to make sure that people's lives improve. Um, um, the SADA chair, can South Africa only lead because uh, there is peace in the country? Can South Africa lead Africa and be led by Africa? Yes, South Africa has every right to be proud of the rec its record, even today. We managed for more than 25 years to be consistent in our respect for our co constitution until July. I still think that we mastered and we passed the test even in July with, with those rights because South Africans and not the military defended the constitution by standing up to say we will not take this. Should the president of South Africa therefore not get the respect that the citizens of this country accord him? when they believe that constitutionality and democracy is our chosen way of life, I think that South Africa can continue to say, yes, we will continue to be a bickering f family. We cannot uh, pretend that uh, we have no differences. And that is why in our constitution, we said we will unite in our diversity, precisely because that is what defines us. That we will quarrel today, but we will always remember that we have a country to build. That we will not have enough to do to eat today, but we will make sure that we eke out something that the most vulnerable amongst us get. But that we cannot have a, an economy in these conditions that can afford 4.2 million for an individual military vet. That we cannot do, but we are saying that what legitimately can be done to restore dignity of the military vets must be done. And, and I agree with you um, that we need to pick up space. We need to um, see what can be done. Um, have we done everything we could do? Yes, we should look after military vets, but we should also be looking at those who are still inside the military, those who ensure that you and I sleep, those who ensure that our borders are guarded, and therefore, if you ask me what percentage I would spend between the military vets and the active men and women in service, I would say to you, I would lean more towards ensuring that even the military vets sleeps well, knowing that the sacrifice of the 70s and whichever years are being secured by the young men and women 
who are active today. And therefore, most of our budget should be going into the renewal and the recapacitation of the Defence Force as we have it today. Thank you very much, uh, colleague. I was about to close. A final question to you. A final pending question. Okay, let's let's hear that pending question, uh, ministers. Uh, my name is Catherine, and I'm from the uh, from Times Live. Uh, so we've seen images and videos inside the room um, where you were held hostage, and the tables were turned over, chairs are thrown to the side. There seems to be stun grenade burn marks on the carpet. Did police use stun grenades in order to rescue you? Thank you. So that's the only question. No, no, yes. you are always. You said it's the last question. Let me just take them down there. So your question, ma'am, is the stand grenade on the carpet or what? Yes, I just want to know what kind of. Uh, it seems okay. and it's the very last it's definitely the very last DG um, it's a question from Rohi Sang from uh, the citizen uh, the question is are there any plans to drop charges against the 56 people who were arrested since mm -hmm. Minister Modisa said the state is willing to listen to its military veterans and their issues are the ministers <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. What? The last question first. <laughs> Are there any plans to drop charges? Not from this table? <laughs> we can't do that. Um, there was a violation. The police responded. You can't hold people against their will and then say, I am going to be released within 10. Mm -hmm. If they do get released, let it be a, a process that is out there. How it will be unfolded, I don't know. But we do not want to set a precedence that um, I can commit any violation and the law will be put aside because it is me and I am a military vet. Legitimate as my grievances might be, I am still a citizen, and precisely because I'm a military vet, especially from the North statutory forces, we expect them to have gone through so much hell that Tabang and I went through that we respect every right of every, every citizen because we had to fight for it. We had to give up our youth to protect and ensure that our children's children don't go through what our grandmothers went through. Therefore, it will not be us asking for the dropping of the charges. Um, maybe Minister Gungumbele will look at that and the presidency, but I speak in the name of the Deputy Minister and I that we will not interfere. Did uh, the police use stun grenades? I cannot say to you yes or no. I was in the room. The rooms were barricaded. They had to open, pry open those doors. What they used, I don't know. Um, maybe have you ever watched a hostage uh, movie? It's always dramatic. <laughs> the tables are turned upside down, not because they hit people with them, but because they are taken out of the way so that if you clear the room, the victims can run, get up and run. It's because when we had those loud bangs, we all went down, like we do in the movies and in the planes when they say, now brace, we braced. Um, and that is what happened. 
So if there are any bends in the carpets and the tables were upside down, I don't know if we, it is in my place to apologize, but it happened. Uh, people were saved. I can assure you that um, I've been long enough in MK to know that no bullet was fired in the room while I was there. there and I do know that um, there was enough restraint, uh, at least amongst the protectors, so that nobody was touched. So whatever it is, I think, ma'am, you will hear when the matter goes to court or wherever it goes, because dinner, we wanted to get out of there. We wanted fresh air outside. Uh, we needed ab ablution uh, facilities. We'd been there, stuck there for hours, by the way, without uh, ablution facilities. And therefore, I think that um, whatever the police may have used, it would be within the permissible range of things that they are supposed to use. Thank you very much. We have come to the end of this media briefing and let me take the opportunity to thank all the members of the media that came and we adjourn. Thank you to the ministers and deputy minister in general. Thank you. Thank you, guys.